Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We're welcome to a little celebration ceremony that we're having here this afternoon. Um, my name is Ian Pullen. I'll be your host for the afternoon, for lack of a better word, I guess. Several months ago, I was at a very informal gathering, told a little story about the Flying Scotsman. And my friend Stan Smale here said to me, he says, Ian, he says, we've got a little celebration plan. I'd like you to tell that story. I said, okay, Stan, I said, that's, that's not a big deal. He says, two or three minutes of your time would be wonderful, and that's it. <laughs> I'm now the master of ceremonies. I've been nothing for working on this for a week, so thank you, Stan, okay? <laughs> you know, thank you, that, That'll teach me next time to agree with things. <laughs> We're celebrating several things today. First of all, we're celebrating the 35th anniversary of Our Lady arriving on her native Canadian soil, native due to her name. Also, the 65th anniversary of her birth. It was 65 years ago in Doncaster, England, that the Dominion of Canada was put together and steam was put in it and she was put to work. Now, both my parents are from Edinburgh. Uh, my dad was a... <laughs> And my dad was a very avid loco spotter when he was a young man. And so it's more than possible that he saw Dominion of Canada during her long run. And it was also probably very possible that he saw the, the flying Scotsman several times. So I'm very happy that my parents are here to, to celebrate with us today. I, I just want to say one thing. I also saw the cock in the mouth in the there real one. There you go. Um, the 84 Pacifics of which Dominion of Canada is a proud member have always been my favorite British locomotives. And ever since she's arrived at the museum, I've always admired her. And I always thought it would be a heck of a thrill to ride behind one. <laughs> well, in 1986, I was visiting Scotland, my relatives, and my grandmother happened to mention, she goes, you know, Ian, there's a special train running in a couple of days, and I think it's going to be run by steam. I said, terrific, wonderful. So I ran down to the station, bought myself a ticket, and sure enough, uh, it was a steam train. So several days hence, I was on the platform at Kakati Station, waiting to go to Edinburgh to ride the special. And I picked up the unmistakable sound of a steam whistle. Like that, exactly like that on cue. Thank you for that cue sound, okay? And I said, geez, I said, that's a steam whistle. This is wild. And so I was standing on the platform and the audio became a video and a steam locomotive came by not more than 10 feet in front of me. So as I picked my jaw up from the, from the ground, sort of said, well, I bet you that must be the steam locomotive that's going to power our train later today. Sure enough, it was. And guess what? It was Union of South Africa, sister A4 engine to the Dominion of Canada. Now, what did I say about wanting to ride behind one? It As made the day. It made the day. I had a heck of a day, and Union of South Africa was an incredible standard for the Dominion of Canada. Now, as I said, the person who is responsible for this day is Mr. Stan Smith. So I'd like Stan to uh, take over from me and say a few words. That's what the LNER whistle sounded like. The A4 has a chime whistle, not a pipsqueak whistle. Welcome everybody. Bienvenue to the mall. Kamara how? <laughs> Very good. 65 years ago, the locomotive behind me was born at Doncaster, England, as the London and Northeastern Railway's Class A4 Pacific number 4489. At this time, in keeping with LNER practice, 4489 was named Woodcock. In keeping with the LNER practice of naming A4s after wild birds. Legend suggests she was to have been named Buzzard. <laughs> And buzzard nameplates were actually cast but never used. Can you imagine what a collectible they would be today? <laughs> In May of 1937, Woodcock returned to the nest of Doncaster to be renamed and repainted in garter blue. On June 15, 1937, the Honorable Vincent Massey, then Canadian High Commissioner for Canada, renamed this locomotive Dominion of Canada. On June the 16th, the next day, Dominion of Canada piloted the special LNER coronation train set with Canadian Prime Minister W.L. Mackenzie King aboard. Two weeks later, Dominion of Canada achieved a speed of 109.5 mile an hour descending the Stoke Bank. 
Later, Sister A4 Mallard would set the official world speed record for Steve of 126 miles per hour. 35 years ago, Canada was 100 years old. Dominion of Canada had been retired. And, like the ferocious Scots before them, the famous Gresley A4s had been driven behind Hadrian's Wall, displaced by diesels and electrics on the London to Edinburgh run, Dominion of Canada and her sisters, fittingly, ended their days piloting passenger trains between Aberdeen and Glasgow. After dieselization, many A4s were spared a date with the scrapper, including Dominion of Canada. Thanks to my CRHA elders, namely Robert Nichols, Donald Angus, Omer Lavallee, Sandy Wortham, John Saunders, and others, Thanks also to British Railways, Tate and Lyle, the sugar people, and Canadian Pacific. Dominion of Canada came to Canada as a centennial gift from Britain to Canada in April 1967. I am still thrilled and proud that the CRHA is the custodian of this magnificent locomotive. Artifacts. I talked about the buzzard nameplates, but let's talk a little bit about artifacts. Once upon a time, Dominion of Canada possessed the CPI steam engine bell, right up there ahead of the smokestack. She possessed a chime whistle and a headboard, indicating whatever passenger train she was heading up. Her bell disappeared in 1956 when she was fitted with a double blast type pipe chimney. She still has her standard LNER chime whistle. However, she never had a headboard as part of her jewel while in Canada, at least until now. Thanks to the generosity of fellow donors and CRHA members, Philip Mason and Ernie Ottawell, both locomotive engineers for the CPR in Revelstoke, British Columbia, today we celebrate the rededication of Dominion of Canada as the motive power for the Flying Scotsman. 